Hello and welcome, McKessel here. Today we're going to continue our mini series on the Destroy Mod, um, an add on for Create. Um, if you haven't seen my previous video, um, feel free to go and watch that one. It kind of covers the kinetic blocks that uh, are in here. But today we're going to get into kind of the meat and potatoes of um, the Destroy Mod, which is the chemistry. Well, maybe just the meat part because there's actual potato shenanigans. But we'll get into that in another video. Anyway, today we're going to be looking at the chemistry features, some of the different um, blocks and machines that we can use in order to play around with Destroy's robust uh, chemistry sandbox system, which is very, like I said, robust. It, it allows for quite a few different things. There's not really too many set um, things you have to do which is pretty cool uh, a few disclaimers <laughs> um, first off I'm not very uh, I'm not a chemist so a lot of this isn't uh, I'm not a big expert on you know, my backgrounds in engineering um, tend to do more with physics and things like that um, and also wanted to point out that the ponder feature inside of the story mod has been put together really well so I highly recommend checking that out if you're stuck or anything like that because it is like I said put together very well so let's dive right in so the first thing um, we're gonna look at here is the refrigerator now this is kind of like a blaze burner except for it cools down your mixtures or whatever you're doing instead of heating it up now the way to do this is let's pop this out is actually by capturing a stray which is a frozen skeleton they can be found in cold biomes, and but if you don't have a cold biome, just a reminder that the uh, strays are actually created when they freeze inside of the powdered snow. So here I've just got a quick setup. If you've got a skeleton farm or something like that, you can actually drop them into some powdered snow, and there you go. They'll transform. And there I've got myself a refrigerator. Now, these work by taking in refrigerants. So if we come in here... Um, and we look at the destroy mod um, you'll see there's tons of different um, chemicals in here um, the JEI integration for this is also really really good um, and you'll notice that they have different attributes by them um, acutely toxic smelly um, but there's actually uh, some of them um, are refrigerants which we can actually just um, search for it and it'll show up. So you see R12 is a refrigerant, 11, 22, and ammonia, which is probably the more common one, easiest to get in the mod. But um, you could just supply the refrigerator from below with refrigerant and it will cool off. Um, we'll be taking a look at this, uh, use that in just a minute. The next is this aging barrel, which is crafted like this with four logs and two oak slabs and a nylon. Nylon's uh, one of the plastics you can create. Um, there's quite a few plastics and we'll look at um, that probably in a different video, not necessarily in this one. Um, but this is used to create um, two different things, the um, undistilled moonshine and the undistilled coarse wine, which we use um, for a few different things. Um, but uh, also the aging barrel is also the workstation block for a new villager added by the destroy mon, which is the innkeeper, which one of the main things you can get for them, besides buying moonshine and coarse wine, is you can get yeast, which you actually need in order to create those. So that's a, an important function of that. Next, we're gonna look at bubble cap. And again, we'll go over all of these, kind of how to use them here in a minute. Um, but you stack these up, use them for distilling or refining different um, uh, chemicals or compounds um, and it's made by four copper ingots um, with four uh, glass planes panes in this uh, orientation here um, next we're gonna look at the centrifuge now the centrifuge um, is uh, used to separate um, fluids or sorry elements inside of your different mixtures um, and we'll, we'll take a look at that here in a little bit too. So essentially we've got a, a few blocks here that help us separate some that help us, um, have the chemical reaction happen like the refrigerator or blaze burner or like our next one here, the dynamo. Um, but the, uh, centrifuge is just a copper casing with a large cogwheel on top. 
So the dynamo is used for electrolysis. It can also be used to charge a few things. Um, it can also be used um, in conjunction with some redstone stuff. Um, if you want to look at that, look at the ponder menu. It, it talks about that. But it's created with this kind of 4x3 um, mechanical crafters um, with two coal blocks on the bottom, four copper um, ingots, uh, raw iron, or copper casing, some electron tubes, and uh, a brass casing, and a cogwheel. Now, lastly, we're going to look at the vat, which is, is kind of the main um, one we're going to be using. It's kind of the, the keystone here of a lot of what's going on. Um, but in order to do that, in order to do that, we need to look at a few other things. So silica, if we take a look here in JEI, um, is used for a few different things. Um, but to create it, you actually crush um, either nether quartz, rose quartz. But if you look at these, they give you a very small chance of it. Um, same with polished. Um, or the amethyst shard, which gives you 20%. So this is going to be your, your best uh, um, remedy for getting silica, but if you haven't found a geode or whatnot, um, you can use these other methods. Anyway, so we're going to combine silica with tuft to get the zeolite catalyst, um, which is a crafting ingredient for this gas filter, um, which is just a carbon, so either um, charcoal or coal, above the, oh, I broke it. So let's take a look at that. So we have the zeolite catalyst here, the coal, or, or charcoal, a filter on either side, and then eight brass sheets. Uh, there we go. And we're gonna actually use that gas filter. You can create a gas mask in part of your hazmat suit, but also it's used for making the vat controller, which is just a copper casing with a gas filter above it. Now, um, we're gonna be looking at a few different things needed to, to make different things work. And one of those is the black light. So I wanted to kind of look at how that worked here. So I flip this around. If we take a sturdy sheet, we drop mercury on it, we place a tinted glass, and we use our dynamo to shock it, we'll actually get the black light. So pretty cool little uh, method of creating it there. Let's uh, turn that off. There you go. That's how that works. Now if we come over here, we're going to take a look at a few different ways to actually mix compounds or, or separate them out. So first you can use a basin with a mechanical mixer to mix different uh, mixtures and things together um, and you can heat or cool this or even some of them don't require it. Um, but we're going to look at, let's just grab some redstone here. Um, if you melt redstone in with the superheated, um, it'll give you this molten cinnabar which we can then come over here and take a look at our bubble cap. So again, let's make sure you can you can do electrolysis with different things over a basin and a few things like that. So if we take this molten cinnabar, we point it into a, a bubble cap, which again, we stack them on top of each other. What it does is it takes whatever uh, mixture or liquid or whatever you're bringing to the bottom and it separates it into different components. So say if you put water in here, Minecraft water will give you distilled water and brine. Um, if you do oil, it'll actually, you're going to need more than two here. Um, they can have different levels here. So this is actually separating it out into molten sulfur and mercury, mercury which we can then use to make our black lights. Um, so if we take a look here at the bubble cap, you can see we actually can use it to distill uh, moonshine. And this diagram here shows you how many bubble caps you need up. So there's two, two... To this one only needs one <laughs> yes urine we'll take a look at that in a future video um, and then you see here with crude oil we actually need five outputs and it gives us LPG uh, benzene all this other stuff and we'll again we'll take a look at this in a future episode um, so yeah, that's how the the bubble cap works um, and again this one requires heating I think most of them do for this one um, and then you just pull them out like that. We're gonna skip over the vat for a second. We're gonna come over here and look at the centrifuge. So here's our centrifuge right here. Uh, you see power on the side. Um, and the input is from the top. And then the densest 
um, of the components go out the side, and, or sorry, the, the lightest go out the side, or least dense, I think it's not technically the lightest, and then the, the most dense come out the bottom. And that's how it kind of separates them out. So if I come in here, and we actually can use milk for this, if I dump a couple buckets of milk in there, it's going to separate out into skim milk, and, oh, I have this pumping it out, but it does the cream. And then I actually have it bringing it up here because we're going to look at this refrigerator here. Because if I put um, cream and skim milk in here and I power this. Hello. There you go. <laughs> It'll actually combine the cream and the skim milk back together and create butter as long as it's got the refrigerator, which we're pumping in ammonia as the coolant here. And there you go. So again, the centrifuge and the bubble cap are used to separate out the different uh, chemicals, right? So you're going to create mixtures, you use those to separate it, then mixing them in a basin or here with the vat, we're actually going to put them back together through reactants or dissolve them or lots of different things, right? So let's take a look at the vat here. So the vat um, needs to be created with specific materials. Um, and I've actually got all of the material types you can have here. And those are glass, tinted glass, copper casing, and then along the bottom here, I've got iron blocks. So those are the kind of the four types. And then you need to have a vat controller as part of the construction. Now, it can be different sizes. It can be as little as one block space in the middle, um, up to a five by five area in the middle. And it doesn't have to be cube. It can be uh elongated or whatever um and now there's a few things to note here with this so um let's take a look here at the ponder for the vet um and again the ponder system here in destroy is is phenomenal i think they did a really good job and it goes over kind of how to construct this if you're getting lost um, but over here on the side it's got this vat materials which it'll show you each of the materials and it'll actually give you um different uh, properties of those different materials so pressure conductivity and transparent are the three different ones it does so obviously some uh, materials can hold more pressure than not um, copper casing um, can hold the most um, the iron block the middle and then the tinted and, and regular glass obviously will explode with not too much more pressure um, so depending on how much pressure you're trying to uh, exert on your um, uh, mixtures or your, your processes, you're going to want to choose different materials. And it uses um, the lowest um, possible side. So if you have a block of glass anywhere, it's going to use black glass. If you don't have any glass but you have an iron block, it's going to use the iron block pressure. Right? Um, and then conductivity... What that's going to do is it actually uh, is about the transfer of heat from inside outside. So if you're trying to use, have it retain the heat, you want to have the less conductive stuff. If you want it to quickly heat up and cool down, obviously you're going to want a more conductive thing, which is why I put the floor here as iron um, so that it'll heat up quickly. Um, so let's take a look at this. So the other thing you can do is you take a wrench, um, you click on any of the sides, and it's going to give you this temperature gauge, which if you look at it, it's going to um, show you what the temperature is at. Um, and if you click it again, it's going to give you pressure. So you can have that on any of the materials, any of the sides. Um, if you do it on the top, it's going to actually create these vents here, um, which can be turned uh, open and closed using a redstone signal. Um, additionally, you can pull gases and fluids out using pipes. Um, and it gives you kind of a, a tool tip here on what it'll actually do. So it says, you know, this pipe is above the level of the mixture, so it can insert mixtures or it can extract gases, but not liquids, right? So if your liquid level is above this, that tool tip would change. So pay attention to what's going on there. Um, and then you can use funnels to input and output um, different materials, and those can be on any of the sides. So if you notice here in JEI, if you see these kind of uh, atom looking things, if you click on them, um, it'll actually give you a test tube of the material. So 
So let's make a mixture here. Let's take, and if I'm in creative mode, I can just use this test tube. And, and I highly recommend going into creative mode and playing around with this first. But if you see here, oh, didn't go in. Oh, it must have been all evaporating really quick. <laughs> but you look here, I've got ammonia. Now my pressure is raising because I've closed the vent. But if I take and I add some iodine in here, you notice that it actually, oh, let's grab some more. Um, it's going to take that ammonia and it's going to use that to create a mixture. So if we flip this around, where is my thing jig? There we go. If we flip this around, we're actually going to get out um, this touch powder, which is ammonia plus the iodine. Now, um, we can use this to create other mixtures. We can use it to create, um, sometimes it requires solids. Uh, go in here again to JEI um, and look up a lot of stuff. Um, we're going to be going over in the next video a lot of these different materials that are added um, by the Destroy Mod. Um, and like I said, we'll get into that in another video. This one's um, covering that, but you see these? These just explode on landing, which you're wondering why would I want that? Um, well, when we get into the oil, we need a seismometer uh, and you need explosions to be able to find oil in a chunk and that doesn't destroy blocks like a TNT would. Um, but yeah, so um, let's see, what else did we do? Oh, the UV lights here. So um, like we talked about, some blocks allow UV, really only glass. Um, and if you have UV on the top and you're open to the sky, um, it'll actually let UV light in in order to allow the processes to happen that require UV light. Um, but if you don't have it on the top or you don't have it open to the sky, you can use the black lights that we created and have them facing the glass and we'll actually do that. And you can, you know, increase, put more black lights. It should make that happen a little bit quicker. And again, um, you can put the either blaze burners or refrigerators on the bottom to heat and cool this, which you can notice here, um, you know, we can check our pressure. That should even out to zero if I open this up. Um, and if I was to close this and then boil a bunch of stuff or us to pump a bunch of stuff in, um, we'd actually see the pressure on that uh, increase to the point where it would explode. So you gotta be careful and watch the pressure, make sure that it's not getting uh, too full. Well, that'll cover it for this uh, video in the Destroy mod. Um, we'll keep going on our mini series and we'll cover, like I said, materials. We'll cover a few of the uh, other kind of small blocks that are added. Um, there's a whole petroleum section for getting more materials. You know, unlike, say, the factory must grow, the oil isn't used to power the mechanics and stuff, but it's actually used in order to uh, get more uh, resources or, or different uh uh, chemical compounds and, and atoms and such. So we'll cover that in a future episode. And uh, thank you guys for hanging out and checking this out. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the uh, comment section below. I'll try to answer as many as I can. But like I said, I'm not a chemist. I don't have an answer for everything. But with that, I'll let you guys go. And we'll catch you next time.